This is the CC Jensen D30 Desorber. This is the most popular size in the Desorber lineup, combining great functionality with a compact size that can even fit through a standard doorway. The Desorber products operate on the ability of cold air to draw in moisture as it heats up. Hot oil in the Desorber chamber is met with cold air bubbles that enter from the bottom. As the bubbles rise through the oil, they heat up and expand, pulling in moisture from the surrounding oil. The hot, moist air is then cooled, either with air, water, or a refrigeration circuit, depending on the model. The cooling process condenses the water, then the air enters the cyclone, where the water drops out of the air, allowing the dry air to then be recirculated back through the process. The water is drained off. The oil system has a supply pump, which runs continuously at fixed speed, and a discharge pump, which switches between high speed and low speed, to maintain the correct oil level in the chamber. The lower level switch is used to vary the discharge pump between low and high speed, whereas the upper level switch trips an alarm as a safety feature. I'm going to talk you through the main system components, and then I'll show you through the flow path that the oil takes through the system. Starting here, we've got our main control panel. The pumps are located down below. We've got the thermostat for the heater. Here we've got a cross-flow heat exchanger. We've got the frequency drive for the discharge pump. And up here is the air blower for the air circuit. Here we've got our desorber chamber, the high and low level switches. And here we've got a fan forced heat exchanger, which helps to cool the air in the air circuit. Down here is the cyclone where the water collects to be discharged from the water outlet. On the side, we have a convenient spot to hang the cord. And on the other side, you'll find a hose rack. Now we'll walk through the flow path of the D30. We start with our inlet port located here. These have quick couplers that you'll use to mate to your hoses. The inlet port is connected directly to our suction pump. This is drawing the oil from your system. On the discharge side, we've got a sample point. This can be used to take a sample that's representative of your main oil volume, and it's also a great consistent place to take that sample. From there, we go through a pressure gauge, measuring the pressure through the system. The oil then travels into the cross-flow heat exchanger, out the other side, and into the desorber chamber. The oil enters the chamber at the top, and it exits at the bottom. It comes out of the chamber, into our discharge pump, which then pumps it back through the other side of the cross-flow heat exchanger and to the outlet. That goes back to your tank. So the air circuit starts with the blower here. The air is pumped into the chamber, it goes down through the chamber where there's a diffuser. That diffuser spreads the air and allows it to bubble up through the hot oil in the chamber. As it does, it picks the moisture out of the oil the moist air is carried into the heat exchanger here where it's cooled and it condenses. That condensed air then travels into our cyclone. The cyclone allows the water to drop out where it can then be discharged. And that air then comes out the top of the cyclone back into our air pump where it's reused again through the circuit. One of the key attributes of the desorber process is it allows you to see the water that you've collected out of your oil system. By placing a pail underneath this water discharge, you can quantify exactly how much water you're removing from your system. That sets the desorber apart from many other products on the market. On our main control panel, we have the user interface where you operate the desorber. You have an emergency stop that will shut everything off immediately. And we'll have a look inside. At the top left, you'll see our phase sequence relay. Because the D30 is often used as a mobile unit, and can be put in places that may not have consistent phase sequence, we've equipped it with this relay that will automatically switch to make sure your motors are turning the correct direction regardless of your phase sequence. We have the phase sensing circuit here, our PLC with all the inputs and the outputs. These are motor thermistor sensor re relays. Down here we have our main contactors for the various motors and the heaters with the branch circuit protection some relays, and the terminal blocks going out to the various sensors and components. And on this side, we have our power supply with the additional fuses. 
The control box also has a thermostatically controlled fan in order to keep temperatures inside the panel in check. The frequency drive controls the speed of the discharge pump. Everything in this is automatic and you don't need to adjust any settings on that at all. To start up the D30, turn the main disconnect switch to on. You'll see the panel light up. Please be patient as it takes about a minute for the software to load. Once you see this screen come up, it means the desorber is ready to operate. We have our main operation buttons located over here and some additional buttons over here. To start and stop the desorber, you'll use the green and red run and stop buttons. The desorbers are equipped with a self-drain function. This can be set to auto or to manual, depending on the kind of system you're using. For a larger system, we would recommend to do auto, as any time there's a stoppage or a fault, the desorber will automatically drain itself from the oil in order to be prepared to restart. For a smaller system, where you may be concerned that you could overfill a particular asset, we recommend putting it to manual. When it's in manual mode, you can use the manual start and stop buttons to perform a manual drain of the circuit. That way you can be close by and ensure that you're not going to overfill anything. There's several pages of information that can be accessed through this Info Pages button. Simply press Next and you'll start scrolling through. Here you can change your units if you prefer PSI and Fahrenheit. The default is bar and Celsius. You can change the language here. There's also an hour counter that shows how many hours the unit is operated and a few other settings there that you don't need to worry about. The next page will take you to the time sequences. Again, this isn't typically something you would need to know about, but it can be helpful if we're you ever troubleshooting. The final page shows several of the system temperatures that are monitored with sensors. Press next again and you'll go back to the main dashboard. You can access alarms by pressing the alarm button and an alarm is also highlighted by the screen turning red. In the alarm screen, it will show you any of the faults that you have and allow you to acknowledge them. I'll demonstrate with the spill sensor. You can see the screen has turned red to alert you that there is an alarm. Press alarm and you'll see that the, there's a desorber failure. That means the desorber has been halted. And then below it, it shows you the leak detection is activated. Once you've cleared the fault, press the Acknowledge button. And the fault will clear. You can then press the Alarm button to take you back to the main dashboard. Some alarms can only be cleared by a power cycle. When you're ready to run the desorber, press Run. The system is fully automatic, so there's nothing you need to do. The suction pump will start running right away to fill the chamber. Once the proper level is reached in the chamber, the discharge pump will start, the heater will start, and the blower circuit and the fan will go accordingly in order to begin the desorbing process. Note that it can take up to an hour before you may see some water start to come out of the outlet. To stop the desorber, you can press the stop button or if you need to, you can press the emergency stop and everything will halt immediately. So that's an overview of the D30 Desorber. I hope this has been helpful to you. If you have any more questions or would like some more information, please reach out to us by the link below.